Well, welcome back to Return to Yehovah. Uh, this is actually going to be part two of a video I did a little bit ago. Um, but it's related to this whole idea of Yeshua, Jesus, being called the Son of God. Um, as I mentioned in a previous video, you know, there's debates about that. I mean, is he God the Father? Is he even divine? Does he, you know... All of the all the possible scenarios, and it dawned to me later. There's also religions that that state emphatically that God God does not have a son, but the Bible says otherwise. Okay. Um, now the last video I looked at just the four Gospels and all the places where Yeshua was called the Son of God. So I'm going to call this "Who else called Yeshua the Son of God." Um, now I want to look at the rest of the books of the New Testament. Just go through those and find the different places. Um, so let's get right to it because uh, I don't want to go too long if possible. All right, Acts, Acts chapter 3, verse 13. It says, The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his son Jesus, or Yeshua whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. So that's Acts 3. You can look that up later. And um, I'm, I'm putting these, uh, this whole uh, Word document in my blog that I'll put a link to in the video later uh, down in the description there. So you can uh, go there and see the different verses. You don't have to you know, take the time to rush to look them all up or whatever unless you want to. Uh, Acts 3.26 says, To you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, or his son Yeshua, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Now, I realize it doesn't use the actual term son of God, but it's talking about God and his son Yeshua. Okay? Acts chapter 7 verse 56 and said oh this is uh, when Stephen was being stoned he and he said look I see the heavens opened and the son of man standing at the right hand of God now I realize that's son of man but I think it for some reason it just seemed to fit with with this whole thing so bear with me okay um I know Yeshua referred to himself as the Son of Man in the Gospels at different times, but I didn't include those earlier. Um, now, Acts chapter 8, verse 37, uh, Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. He was talking about uh, the Ethiopian eunuch wanting to be uh, baptized. And he said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he got that from, uh, you know, whatever Philip shared with him. Uh, then Acts chapter 9, verse 20, immediately he preached Messiah in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. I believe that's talking about Paul, but again, look it up if you want to be sure. Now we're getting into the book of Romans. First, uh, a couple verses in Romans 1. Verse 4 says, And declared to be the Son of God, we're talking about Yeshua, of course, with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So he's saying that that is how Yeshua was declared to be the Son of God, you know, by the resurrection from the dead. But that's kind of cool. Uh, verse 9 of Romans 1, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. And that was again Paul talking about, you know, uh, how he prays for them, but uh, in the gospel of his son, God's son. Now Romans 5.10 says, For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Okay, now again, I'm just pointing out places where not only in the Gospels, but later on in the rest of the New Testament, 
Yeshua is being referred to as God's son. Okay. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 3, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin he condemned sin in the flesh okay now we're going into uh, books of corinthians first corinthians 1 9 it says god is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son jesus christ our lord or yeshua messiah our lord second corinthians 1 19 for the Son of God, Yeshua Messiah, or Jesus Christ, who, who was preached among you by us, by me, Silvanus, and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. But anyhow, he's called the Son of God. Now to the book of Galatians, uh, verse, or chapter 2, verse 20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, and the life with which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So again, I'm, I'm beating the horse, you might say, but Yeshua is called the Son of God, repeatedly. Uh, verse four. Or chapter 4 verse 4 says but when the fullness of the time had come God sent forth his son born of a woman born under the law and a couple of verses later verse 6 he says and because you are sons God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying out Abba father now uh, Ephesians 4 13 says till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Messiah. Uh, now, Hebrews, uh, book of Hebrews, a couple places here, uh, verse 8 of chapter 1. Hebrews 1, eight says, But to the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Hebrews 4.14 4, says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Yeshua, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Hebrews 6.6 6 says, If they fall away to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. Now Hebrews 7.3 says, Without father, without mother, without gene genealogy, having neither being or having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God remains a priest continually um that's hebrews 7 3 we might want to look at that separately i won't do that in this video but you might want to pull that one up they might be referring to uh melchizedek and and how he had no known uh, genealogy and that kind of thing but still it's connecting it to the son of god and yeshua and melchizedek are uh, compared and all that in hebrews um and let's see here um now, Hebrews 10, 29. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? So the point there is do not trample underfoot the Son of God. Uh, we're almost done here. 1 John... Actually, a few more. I'm sorry. First uh, John has quite a few because he really emphasizes this. First John 3, 8 says, He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, 
the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Okay, John or First John 4, 9. In this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. 1 John 4.15 says, now get this, this is kind of crucial to our little discussion here, but whoever confesses that Yeshua is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. 1 John 5.5 5 says, now actually a bunch of these are 1 John 5, so hang in there. Um, we're almost done, but who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Yeshua is the Son of God. And then he says in verse 9, If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he has testified of his Son. The next verse he says, He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. Now, I'm not sure if I'm just, you know, emphasizing the his son too much that it takes away from the verses. I don't mean to, but uh, 1 John 5, 12, and then 13, it goes on to say, He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. This is 1 John 5, 20. That we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Okay, we got a couple of little doggies that just cannot be quiet. Almost done, so hopefully we can get through with this. Levi, could you move the doggie somewhere? Sorry, but life in the real world, right? Um, okay, so 2 John 1, 3. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, he says, in truth and love. And then 2 John 1, 9 says, Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Okay, one more and we're done here. Revelation 2, 18 says, And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, these things says the Son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. So the point is, from the beginning of the Gospels all the way to the book of Revelation, there are examples where Yeshua is called over and over the Son of God. Okay, uh, It's getting a little noisy here, so I'm going to end it here. But uh, Yehovah bless you and keep you. Shalom.